Hey, greetings family, it's Pastor Torre. Welcome to the One YouTube channel. You're getting ready to hear a profound word and I don't want you to miss any profound words. Make sure to subscribe and uh, set on your notifications so that you can experience all that God has for you. Let's get into this word. It's gonna bless you and I'll be back with you at the end. Pastor Torre um, is a mentor, confidant. He is a legend. And I'm not going into details, but a few years ago, I had an opportunity that looked like it was big. You got to be careful, man. It's the difference between a good opportunity and a God opportunity. And since I was younger, I never had a problem hearing God. I hear him from messages. I hear him from music. I just, I hear God. But I could not hear God about this opportunity. And I felt like the Lord said, call Pastor Tory, And I called him and I said, man, I don't know what to do. He gave me wisdom and saved me so much heartache. He, I believe you helped save my life. I thank you for being a prophet. I thank you for being a pioneer. I thank you for setting a standard. This room is just a small glimpse of the impact you've made in the world. The stories will be told for generations. But I honor you, I love you, happy 50th. The 50th year, biblically, represents Jubilee. It's when the debts were paid off and people were set free. And so this would be a year of an explosive amount of freedom um, for those around you. But also I was praying and the number 50 in Greek translates to the word Pentecost. It was on the 50th day after Jesus went up, his Holy Spirit came down. Two things happened that I don't want us to miss in Acts chapter 2. One, a new gift was given. I believe this year is going to be a year of brand new gifts popping off in your life. Uh, but something else happened that I think we ignore. 120 people were in that room when the Holy Spirit descended. 500 people were supposed to be there. 380 people found something better to do than wait on God. But 120 people, that's 24% of the people God spoke to were still there on one of the greatest days in history. Not only do I believe this is gonna be a year of new gifts, but I believe this is gonna be a year for the remnant. For those who decided to last. For the 24% that stuck it out with you, the ride or dies. Come on, if that's you, if you're in this room and you're one of the No Limit Soldiers, I believe this is going to be a great year for you as well. Hey, I'm going to read three verses. You can take your seat. Y'all gave me way more time than I need. Um, this is going to be quick. I'm going to read three verses. I was saying you could take your seat after I read the verses, but I'm, this L.A., you got to be very specific. I'm going to read three verses and then <laughs> you can take your seats. Man, this amazing worship team. Come on, man. Brunus Charles. First Lady Brunus, we give God Joshua 1. Joshua 1. <laughs> hey, Chandler Moore, can y'all praise God for Chan? I love this guy so much. Um, what many people don't know is that he lived with me for about seven years. What pe people also don't know, I knew his wife since she was probably around five or six. I've known her forever. Um, but, but Chan gave me good practice before I had three of my own sons. And I did a lot of things right, but I did a lot of things wrong. You taught me a lot. And I just want to affirm God's hand on your life. Conflict is confirmation. And those who have an anointing on your life sometimes are attacked and targeted the most. But don't let the attack of the enemy talk you out of God's promises concerning you. It is proof that he's for you. When hell is against you, you got to know that all of heaven is backing you. Joshua 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Bad news. Good news. Now then, you and all these people, I love that all these people, get ready to cross 
the Jordan River and to the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place woo, where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Lord Jesus, breathe on this word. What an honor to preach for this amazing congregation and in front of these amazing giants. I pray that I would decrease, you increase. Don't allow them to see the man standing on this stage, but let them see the God standing in me. Thank you for this word that you gave me to give them. Thank you for my amazing, fine, intelligent, God-fearing wife. We give you praise for her, for our children, for this body of believers. Do what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, help me preach. Help me preach like we're in South Carolina. I'm a, I'm a little country boy. So this is what we do. You're going to have to talk back to me, but I'm going to invite you to have your own microphone. Look at three people and give them the message title. Are you ready for this? Tell them, I expect it to break. Tell them, I expect it to break. I expect it. I expect it to break. Now, before I even drop this thing down like we're in the club, can you give God a praise like some stuff is about to break loose in your life? I expect it to break. This is a fascinating promise that God gives to Joshua. He says that every place your feet touch will be yours. Now, he tells them the promise is not going to fall on your lap. Your feet got to get involved. But when you show up, God promises that he will show up. And this is why the attack has been so fierce in your life, because the enemy is intimidated by you showing up to places. This is why he's kept doors closed and rivers running in front of you to stop you from getting to the promise that God has for you. But the devil is, always will be, and always has been a liar. If God is for you, he's more than the world against you. And this is what is about to happen in your life. I came to prophesy that every place that you show up, God is about to show out. You didn't hear what I just said. Every place that you show up, God is about to show out. The devil has been trying to stop you, but resistance is affirmation. The greatest compliment hell can give you is conflict. The resistance in your life is proof that God is really for you. And God is bringing you into some places that where your feet touch belongs to you. Tell your neighbor, you just got to show up. You just got to show up because you just got to show up. You got to show up. And so I came to speak strength to your feet. Some of y'all came here weary, you've been tired, you've been beat down. Man, this year has been so hard, but the year ain't over yet. You still got some places to show up so God can show out. Now, what drew my attention to this passage wasn't just the prophetic word God gives Joshua, but the timing of it. He says, now Moses is dead. Moses is dead. It's almost like God was waiting on this. Moses, but to really understand this passage, you have to turn one page to the left. Deuteronomy 34 is the obituary of Moses, and it has something very interesting in this text. Ladies and gentlemen, it tells us that when Moses died, he was healthy. It explicitly says he had vision and he had strength. I asked the book questions. God, why were you so interested in letting us know that Moses was in good health? There was no IV. There were no tubes hooked up to him. He wasn't on life support. He took him to the mountain, had a funeral with him. That was it. I said, God, why was it important for us to know that nothing was wrong with him? God says, because every now and then I will call something to an end that you think nothing is wrong with. Oh, man. Every now and then, God will cause a divine disruption to a relationship you thought was all good, to a career that you thought you were called to. Every now and then, God would do like Peyton Manning and call an audible in your life just because he's the best QP that ever lived before. God sees something you can't see. And whenever God is interested in your progression and your acceleration, he will call an end to something you thought you needed. Here's a question. Can you trust God to bother the things that seem to be working? Nah, don't look at me in that tone of voice. It's really easy. It's easy to trust God when it's falling apart. Oh, it's easy to trust God in the valley. It's easy to trust God when there's friction and tension going on in the area of your life. But when it's clicking on all cylinders, it's firing off, everything is working good, the bills are paid, the children are acting right, the marriage is intact. It's very difficult to trust God in a situation that you thought was all good. Here is the reason why God decides to put an end to something you thought was good, because there's always a shift before the lift. Let me, let me explain it to you. You've been praying for a 
elevation, but before there's elevation, there's always separation. Can you trust God to start messing with stuff that you don't think he has any business bothering? <laughs> Nothing was wrong with Moses, but it was just a new season. Ooh, did that for me. Tell somebody, it's a new season, homie. It's a new season. It's a new season, dog. It's a new season. <laughs> September 22nd is my favorite time of year because we shift from a hot Columbia, South Carolina summer into fall. Fall means I can wear a jacket. Layers, come on, you're into fashion. I love fall, y'all. I love fall. I love fall. Do you know why it's called fall? It's so deep. The season is called fall because leaves <laughs> fall from, look it up, Google never lies, because leaves <laughs> fall from trees. I was interested. I said, Google, you got to explain this to me. Why do leaves fall from trees? And Google is a better preacher than Noel Jones. No, not to him. He's a better preacher than Creflo Dollar. No, not to him. He's a better preacher than Keon Henderson. No, not to him. Google will preach your face off of you. And Google started hooping. It had an organ player behind it. It said, Travis, I'm about to explain to you why fall is called fall. Fall is called fall because leaves fall from trees. Got it, Google. But why do leaves fall from trees? Are you ready for this? This side ain't ready. I'm coming over here. Are you ready for this? Leaves fall from trees because the leaves that provided nutrients and energy to the trees in the summer, if the tree don't let it go, the same leaf that gave it life yesterday if it take it into the winter, it'll pull life from it. So the tree is preaching to us. And it said, you were good for me in this season. <laughs> but God is shifting some things that I don't understand. Because I only need things around me. That can add to me in my next season. And we got to learn like the tree to leave the leaves alone. Let them fall. Let them fall. And oftentimes it's in ways that you can't even explain because you were satisfied talking on the phone all night, breathing to each other. I don't know, dog. It's just the way she breathed. She breathed different, dog. Then all of a sudden, you woke up on a Tuesday. The same name came on your phone, and you got annoyed. You got agitated. You was irritated and couldn't explain it. Can I tell you something? God is trying to allow the leaves to fall up off of you because he's about to take you into a new season. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what's happening in this text. God allows Moses to shift out so that Joshua can shift in. And here's what God wants you to know. Until you can trust him with the leaf, until you can trust him with that, he can't trust you with this. The new is here. Now Moses is dead. Now Moses is gone. Bad news. Good news is get ready to cross over. Now what you got to understand is that God has always been in the crossovers. I'm a basketball fan. If I wasn't called to preach, I'd be in the NBA. Amen. And <laughs> R.I.P. Kobe, that's my guy, man. Never met him. But man, I was sad like my homie died. I love Kobe Bryant. And I remember the one year, I remember I was in high school, I remember one year, everybody thought Allen Iverson was gonna win. That was hilarious, <laughs> you remember that? They thought, they thought AI was gonna win because they won one game. They won the first game in the finals and Kobe talked to Shaq and was like, you ready? He was like, yeah, let's play now. And they just beat him up real bad. Y'all remember that year? I love that. And, and I met AI one time and you know what? AI is really a small dude. The only thing AI really, really had in his bag, don't get mad at me, was a killer. Crossover. The dude will cross your ankles all the way smooth up uh, as Tyrone Lou. Your ankles will be gone before you even know it. But I know somebody with a better crossover than him. His name is Jesus. God has a killer crossover. It has always been on the heart of God for crossover. How do you know this, Travis? I'm about to give you a bomb. You're not ready for this. Do you know what the name Hebrew means? Crossover. <laughs> So 500 years before Joshua, God called a man named Abraham, birthed to him these Hebrews, which name literally means crossover. 
And Abraham sets a trend. He crosses over from a family that believes in multiple gods and starts following the one and true living God. And you'll see it just happening over and over and over. Abraham takes authority over his own life and said, I'm going to have an Ishmael. And then God crosses over Ishmael and lends a blessing on Isaac. Isaac has twins, Jacob and Esau. And then God crosses over Esau and lends a blessing on Jacob. Jacob wrestles with God and crosses over from a trickster to a father of many nations. 12 tribes come from this man. The 11th son is Joseph. Do you know what happened to Joseph? Joseph crossed over from being a slave to second in command. Not only that, Joseph has some sons. Ephraim and Manasseh. Jacob gets ready to anoint the son, crosses over Manasseh and lands a blessing on Ephraim. God is a God of the cross over. And so if you've ever been an underdog, if you've ever been overlooked, if you've ever been the black sheep of your family, if you've ever felt like second class, if you've ever been in the back of the line, David, get ready because you're about to step into your season of the cross over. I'm going to do it like we in South Carolina and give you 10 seconds to clap your hands and bless the God that got you on his mind even with the devil playing my game tell your neighbor get ready for the crossover get ready for the crossover his pattern for transition is crossing over he's crossing his handles is crazy cross you over even Jesus this Jewish man comes lived 33 years blameless Perfect, unblemished, dies a gruesome death on a hill called Calvary. And I love that Jesus died to cover my sins because whenever God looks at me, instead of seeing me in my ratchetness and my nastiness and my triflingness, you know what he sees? He sees the cross over my sins. You didn't hear what I just said. The only reason you're still here in your right mind ain't got nothing to do with the Mac or the Mary Kay. It's because there's blood that's covering your filth. Is anybody grateful that the cross covered you? And so, and so, what's interesting, what's interesting about Joshua's crossover is how God did it. It's not just what he did, it's how he did it. Joshua 3, 8, thank you, I'm glad you're interested. This is crazy, dog. <laughs> God told Joshua, he says, tell the priest, Joshua 3, 8, it's right there, look at it, look at it. This is God talking. He said, now go tell the priest, tell them to do this. Tell them to go stand in the river. Huh? Tell the priest, did God ever give you an instruction? Just made you scratch your head just a little bit. Go stand in the river. That's what God said. We all see it. Five verses later in verse 13, Joshua puts his own interpretation on it. He said something God didn't say. He said, hey, priest, uh, come here real quick. <clears throat> he said, hey, when you go to the river, when your feet touch it, he says, the waters that's flowing gonna be cut off. God's about to block up what's been blocking you. Now, I'm reading this, and then I started searching because I asked the book questions. I said, well, God, why, how did Joshua have this revelation? Somewhere in these five verses, Joshua was inspired to put words in your mouth. <laughs> how did he know how you was gonna do it? Uh, this is a shouting moment right here. I'm going to try not to take liberty, but I just felt it in my left toe. The reason <laughs> Joshua had the confidence and the audacity to speak up for God is because he was holding on to a promise in chapter 1. God already told him, wherever your feet touch is yours. So guess what? If my feet touch the Jordan, it got to move. Now, what's crazy is not what God did, but how he did it. Historically, the Bible says that the water was backed up all the way to the city of Adam. That would have been 20 miles from where they stood. Not only that, the river was wider back then, two miles wide. And so to back it up would have been 120 feet high. Ladies and gentlemen, they walked across on dry land, but that's not even the shouting part. The shouting part is the people who was watching. Did you know they did this right in front of Jericho? Ooh, I was praying about this this morning, and I said, God, that's so cool to me that they saw the water before they saw the wall. I was like, that's really cool to me. He said, he said Travis, you're missing it. You're missing it. He said, I need you to tell them at one. I need you to tell them this. There are miracles that they discounted that already got the enemy's attention. 
See, to you, until I just told you what happened with the Jordan, it wasn't really a big deal. And that's how it's been in your life. You've been missing the fact that there's been so much popping off in your life. People have been scrolling and watching you on Instagram that can't stand you because you are a walking, talking, breathing mirror. You are a billboard for the glory of God. And there's already so much that has happened that eyes haven't seen. You don't even know what he's already done. And if you knew what he did, then that would give you the faith for what he's going to do. I don't need everybody. Give me 20 people who know that there's a miracle in your life already that the enemy is aware of. The Jordan opened because anointed feet touched it. So why would God escort them to a running river? Why would God escort them to a closed door? Why would God escort them to a mountain that refused to move? It's because God wants to do two things. He wants to allow your faith to be activated, and he wants his glory to be demonstrated. God is interested in his own reputation. Every now and then, God allows allow something to pop off in your life that's unexplainable, that nobody can put words to it, just to show the devil that he's still God and that the devil is still defeated. God doesn't look at opposition the same way we do. For God, opposition is opportunity. He laughs in the face of danger, like Simba. He loves it. And so resistance should be expected, watch this, anticipated, and appreciated. If you're anointed, you should anticipate and appreciate the resistance in your life. Because anything that's unblocked is actually a trap. The, oh man, I just want to help you real quick. Just because you've been saying you've been saying the wrong thing. You gotta understand attack is affirmation. Say that with me. Attack is affirmation. You want resistance in your life. You want walls in front of you. You want rivers in front of you because it's proof that God is actually for you. Everything that is against you is actually a slave to your obedience. And the Jordan was just waiting on their feet to touch it. <laughs> because the Jordan had a word. Y'all not ready? You ready for this? I'm talking this side this time. Did you hear what I just said? The Jordan had a what? Do you remember Jesus, after he preached, was taking his nap on Sunday? On a boat. Made a pillow, a cot. He was snoring, dreaming about heaven. And the disciples? Woke him up. Jesus is a lot like my wife. My wife don't like when she get woken up <laughs> for anything. I don't know what you got in mind. Don't touch me. I am sleep. <laughs> Jesus was sleep, and they bothered him, and they shook him, and they rocked him, and they woke him up. Jesus woke up mad. He was like, "Why y'all don't want me up?" They said, "Cause we fit." to die. Don't you know there is water on the boat? We do boats, man. We fishermen, but there is water on this boat is about to go down. God gets so upset. He speaks to the storm. He says, peace be still. Go about to sleep, but he's upset. The Bible makes it very clear. He tells him, man, where is y'all faith? Y'all done woke me up for this. I'm going to tell you two reasons why Jesus was mad. You ready? Reason number one, he was mad. Because he was on the boat. go down I don't know who this word is for but somebody been in a rocky season you've been crying and waking up Jesus Jesus said quit stressing while I'm resting you can't go down cuz I'm on the boat I'm talking to you in the back I need you to give God a five-second praise like you know he is a God who sustains what your boat is. Your boat might be your career. God said, I'm in it. Your boat might be your marriage. God said, I'm in it. Your boat might be your children. God said, I'm in it. Your boat might be your finances, but because you're tired, God says, I'm in it. You can't go down if I'm in the middle of it. You forgot that he was on the boat. He's on the boat. He's on the boat. He's on the boat. Reason number one, reason number two, that I believe Jesus was upset. Because before he decided to go to sleep, he did what he did in the first six days of creation. 
God only rests after he's spoken. And Roosevelt, he went to sleep because he already spoke. Before he even stepped on the boat, don't miss this. He said, let us go to the other side. Now, now, the reason you're not clapping, because you thought Jesus was talking to the disciples. Disciples standing there like, cool, cool, cool. Jesus like, move it. I ain't even talking to y'all. I do weather. I'm talking to what I see on the other side of y'all. Because there's a storm scheduled in the next two hours, in the next two days, in the next two years. But it can't touch you because I'm going to go ahead and let it know. Before we come in the storm, I see you cancer. Before I get there, I see you bankruptcy. Before I get there, I see you divorce. Before I, I see you molestation. Before you get there. It can't touch you. I wish you would give God a praise like you know whatever you're facing. He already spoke to it. Alpha and Omega. Beginning. He already spoke to it. And he said, not only am I in it, but I guarantee victory. Oh my God. Did you hear it? You missed it over here. I said God has already guaranteed victory this is worth your clap and your shout so i'm gonna give you 10 seconds to clap your hand like you know your victory and your healing is guaranteed your deliverance is guaranteed your miracle is guaranteed the promise trumps the problem and so this jonathan is why the Jordan had to open Because not only did the feet touch it, but the word touched it before they even got there. And I came all the way to L.A. It's a long flight, y'all. I didn't come to play around. (laughs) I came to tell somebody to get your word in front of it. You're only discouraged. You're only anxious. You're only frustrated. Because you showed up to a place that your word didn't get to first. Put your word in front of it. I don't care what it is. I watched that Kanye documentary. I said either he crazy or he a prophet. (laughs) But Kanye got more God than most of us. Because even before he had money or a record deal, he put his word in front of it. I need somebody to take the next 15 seconds. Oh my God, I'm trying to stay in English because I ain't in my church. But I need you to take 15 seconds and put your word out in front of it. Come on. If God said it, that settles it. I'm gonna put my word in front of it. No weapon form can prosper. I'm gonna put my word in front of it. I am the head and not the tail. I'm gonna put my, I'm above only and not my marriage will make it. My children will be saved. My body will be healed. I'm gonna put my word in front of it. Because God has already done what God's about to do. But I didn't come to preach to you about the crossover. I really need to tell you what happened before Joshua 1. Before Joshua 1 is Exodus 33. And in Exodus 33, something interesting happens. In Exodus 33, the Bible says Moses will meet with God face to face. That is intimacy, y'all. He'll meet with God face to face. He'll go into the tent. The cloud will come down. He'll have a meeting with God every day. He'll pitch his tent and meet with God. It's amazing. We respect Moses. We know Moses. But look at the last part of this. When Moses would leave, Joshua would stay. Excuse me? How do you outlast Moses? This is burning bush Moses. This is ten plagues Moses. This is ten commandments Moses. This is face shining, got to put a bag over it Moses. This is Moses we talking about. This dude went in the mountain 
fasted 40 days, no food and no water, Moses. And Joshua outlasted him. God said, draw their attention to this because many times you think that the anointing comes from nowhere. <laughs> the most insulting compliment someone can give you is that you came from nowhere. <laughs> Do you see Chan now in all of his splendor? <laughs> he like Michael Jordan and he make everything he shoot just, I wanna sing about tomatoes. <laughs> But before there was a Maverick City, for almost seven years he carried my bags. Washed dishes, kept hearing not yet. Because the anointing just don't fall from nowhere. And the problem is, we're raising a generation that wants impact without intimacy. Joshua would stay in the tent. I came to preach to a few people that's been hidden in your tent. Uh, they don't know your name now, but you've been in the tent. God's been developing you in private so that he can demonstrate his glory through you publicly. Tell somebody, I've been to the tent. I've been to the tent. I've been. Now, what you got to understand about Moses? And I'm almost done. Not really. What you got to understand about Moses? His name. Do you know what the name Moses means? It's crazy. The name Moses means drawn from water. He was his baby. His mama had to put him on the river because Pharaoh wanted to kill him. And then the Pharaoh's daughter found him. And they used his mama to nurse him because you're going to get paid for what the enemy stole from you. Yeah. Yeah. Hired the mama without even knowing it was the mama. But when the daughter pulled him out of the river, she gave him an Egyptian name, Moses, which means drawn from water. Now, that don't mean a lot to you unless you understand what happens to him when he's 80 years old. When he's 80 years old, he leads people through the Red Sea, water. So God drew him out of what he was called to guide other people through. This ain't for everybody. But for the people who've been looking back over your life with regret, having your head down in guilt for things that you overcame and that you survived. No, 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 no. God drew you from the very things that you're supposed to lead people. There are books that need to be written for what God drew you out of. Moses, he was a deliverer. And that's not Joshua's story. He wasn't drawn from water. Joshua wasn't from the water. He was from the mud. Joshua grew up making bricks. That was his career as a slave. Until God set them free. But I didn't come to preach to you about the tent. I really need to tell you about what happened after the crossover. After the crossover, the Bible says in Joshua 5, y'all ain't ready for this. They just crossed through the Jordan. It's time to throw a party. If I walk through dry land and see water 120 feet in the air, because we're throwing a party. But before... They can blow the balloons up. And before the DJ can get the scratching, and before they bring out the scrimp, that's what they call it in Myrtle Beach, the scrimp, <laughs> God does what God do. Verse one, they cross it over. The enemy saw it. It's amazing. Verse two. <laughs> Look at verse two. I don't like this. Look at verse two, verse two, verse two. You got it, you got it, media. Come on, I believe in you, I believe in you. Verse two, the next one, the next one. Verse two, five and two. It says, at, there we go. No, nope, that's not the one. Joshua five, two. I'm gonna just read it for you. It says, at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise, what, do what? Circumcise the Israelites again. Verse 1 was a testimony. Verse 2 was a test. Verse 1 was a party. Verse 2, God says, bring the knives out. <laughs> now, I'm like, wait a minute, God. Why? Come on. Why are you, not why are you messing with my parts? Why are you? Come on. Like, like, it shows that sometimes God and I have two different focuses. 
We have two different priorities. We have two different perspectives. I would be trying to throw a party, yet God would focus on progress. <laughs> and he tells them, he says, hey, hey, get the knives out, get the knives out, and get the cutting. Here's why. You ready? Because of where Joshua was from. His forefather had been crossed over and touched by God, Ephraim. Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim. Do you know what the name Ephraim means? Fruitful. Here's why after the crossover with the cutting, because the only people qualified to go with you into the promise are those with the ability to produce. Mm. I need you to hear what I'm telling you. Because like Moses, nothing seemed to be wrong with the men. On the outside, everything was fine. Nobody could tell what was really going on. But God has a way of pulling back the covers. God got a way of peeling back the layers. And God says, there is something hidden that I want to deal with. There's something hidden that I want to cut, that I want to do. Before you celebrate, let me do surgery. Here's the good news. Whenever God starts messing with you privately, it's because he's about to do something crazy publicly. And God broke them. Here we go. That's what I really came to preach about. I didn't come to preach about the cutting. I didn't come to preach about the crossover. I didn't come to preach about the tent. I came to preach about the wall. Because I expected to break. God got the knives and cut them. Because whenever God starts breaking you, it's because he's about to break what's in front of you. And the Bible says they took the same anointed feet that hit the Jordan and they marched around the wall 13 times. Once for six days, seven the last day. And the wall came down. I'm done right here. I really just came to tell you this. Get ready for the walls to come down. You've been wondering why God has you where he has you. It's because you're a wall breaker. You've been wondering why you had to go through your cutting season. It's because you're a wall breaker. And walls only respond to voices that been through some things. You are in Los Angeles, California to break down some walls, to break down some barriers, to break down some generational curses. I need you to lean on your neighbor like you in a Baptist church and tell him you got a breaker's anointing. That's what's on you. He broke you so that you could break some stuff. You've been called and anointed to be a breaker. And so God says to Joshua, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. God says to Joshua, hey Joshua, take your shoes off your holy ground and tell the priest to go get the ram's horns. The ram's horns? Ram's horns? Ram? L.A. Ram? Ram? Ram's horns? And you know you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. <laughs> I said, God, why, why the ram's horn? He said, because when the wall fell, they only used two weapons. The voices and the horns. But he allowed the sound to fight for him. So I went to the book, Pastor. I said, you got to tell me about these ram's horns. He said, go to Genesis 22. I went to Genesis 22, the first time the, worship, the word worship and the word love are mentioned in the Bible, Genesis 22. He tells Abraham, go to the mountain and sacrifice your son. Go worship. Abraham goes up. Do you know what happened? Right before he does what God tells him to do, a ram gets stuck in the bush. A ram gets stuck in the bush. And the ram becomes the substitute, the sacrifice for him. And then something happens to a man named Moses. A man named Moses is 80 years old. You're not too old to be used by God. A man named Moses is 80 years old, and something unique happens. There is a burning bush that starts talking to him. The ram gets stuck in the bush. Moses gets introduced to the burning bush. Not only that, but then God finds Joshua and says, get the ram's horn. I started praying, y'all, and God gave me a word. You ready for this? He says, Travis, the reason all of these are paralleling, he said, the reason these are paralleling, he said, it's because sacrifice has a sound. You heard that? You heard that noise? That's part of the illustration. <laughs> sacrifice has a sound. He broke you for breakthrough. 
Sacrifice has a sound. Slay the ram, but keep the horns. <laughs> and every season that you survive, your worship should be intensified. Oh, man, I need y'all to hear me. It's not enough just to say yes. That's the sacrifice. But where is the sound? Of, that's why I love this church, because this is a church for worshipers. If you don't like to worship, you'll get annoyed in here. You'll be like, that's another song? But not everybody feel that way. There's some people in here that says this is an opportunity for a sound to come from a deep place in me because God has called me to shout at walls. The sound fought for them. The sound fought for them. The sound. Now this is it. This is the last thing. I got four minutes. I don't need it. This is it. You ready for this? What you overcome is a sign of your oil. I told my wife in the back, I never saw this before. God told me this literally for this church. I almost threw my whole laptop. I said, God, this is too much. I knew that Moses was drawn from water because he was going to guide people through water. But Joshua's big moment was guiding people through a wall. You didn't hear me earlier when I said what Joshua's occupation was growing up. He was a brick maker. He was from the mud. Your history has equipped you for your ministry. You don't hear what I'm telling you. You don't hear what I'm telling you. You had to go through what you had to go through because it gave you the all to guide other people through it. You don't hear what I'm telling you. I need you to give God a praise for everything that you overcome. I expected to break. Why? Because I've been anointed for this. I didn't go through that for no reason. God anointed. He anoints my head with all. My cup runs so I've been anointed for this. I expected to break. I expect paradigms to break. Industries to break, barriers to break, strongholds to break, box offices to break, records to break, traditions to break, family curses broken, stereotypes broken, racism broken, sickness broken, break, 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 I need somebody to break out with a praise and give God a, a shot like you've been anointed, I expect it, I expect it to break. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I expect it to break. I, ooh, I expect it to break. There was a woman in the Bible with an issue of blood. And the Bible says she said to herself. There was no altar call. There was no email blast. She didn't see it on the IG story. She said to herself, if I can touch the hem of that's why you came today gas price is too high to play around you came to touch him she said if I can touch the hem of his I have an expectation I expect it to break him I don't care how long it's been lasting since you here I want to prophesy over your life that thing is about to break him that wall is about to break you've been anointed the story of two guys that's in prison <laughs> Paul and Silas, you know the story. And then they start, they start singing and praying to God. And the Bible says, at about midnight, as they were just worshiping. Because see, the devil don't know my greatest weapon is not my hands. Oh, Paul had a sick pen, but that wasn't his greatest weapon. The devil locked up everything but the thing that had the most authority. And as long as I got a mind to remember, and as long as I got a mouth to declare, the freedom is not optional. As they praise, the chain fell off. That ain't the good news. The good news is every cell door open because everybody around me is coming out. I need you to pull your name and tell them you're coming out of this. What didn't break you made you stronger. What didn't kill you made you stronger. You're coming out of this. You're coming out better than you went in. Wiser than you went in. Stronger than you've been anointed for it to break. Take yourself 20 seconds. Lift your hands and pray the God of the breakthrough. I expect it to break. I expect it to break what the enemy meant for evil. I expect it to break what my mama and daddy dealt with. I expect it to Lift your hands for a 
moment. I thank you that you are the God of the breakthrough. You're the God of the change the way we pray. Change the way we see our history. You are a God who calls all things to work together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. What happened to us actually happened for us. And we don't understand it, but we give you glory for our story. Because our history equips us for our ministry. You broke us because you were anointed to break things. And so no longer, I need you to hear this, will we be shy or apologetic about the anointing on our life? Woo! Did you hear what I just said? My shy days are over. Hey, my timid days are over. I'ma quit apologizing for showing up. I'ma I'm quit having my head down. I will lift up my head. Uh, oh, ye gates and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. And the King of glory shall, who is this King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. God's about to show out where you show up. Take 10 seconds, lift your voice, lift your hands, and praise him like you expect it. God bless you, family. Well, I just believe and know that that word ministered to you as they often always do. Remember to subscribe so that you can continue to experience this rich. We'll send you a reminder. If you want to sow into this ministry, we are reaching people, as you know, all around the world. And we need your help and your support to not just bless people spiritually, but practically in all the ways that we do. The giving instructions are on the screen. Sow into this and may the Lord bless you abundantly in every way. God bless you. We'll see you next week.